Hi everyone, you've made it to the last module. Um, in this one, we're gonna go over the finer points of how to collect and submit data each week once the milkweed that you've cut back starts to regrow. Just a note, if you're working with two milkweed patches, we have a slightly different video for you, so you wanna back up and click the link for that one instead. So here's how the timing should work out. After you cut back milkweed stems, it usually takes between one and three weeks for new stems to show up. The exact timing is going to depend on how much rain you get, what type of soil you're in, and so forth. Um, anyway, once you have at least one stem with an inch of new growth on it, you can start submitting data. And starting at this point, we're hoping you'll visit your milkweed patch once a week for at least four or five weeks, although going longer is even better. Your visits don't need to be exactly weekly. If you're off by a few days, that's no big deal. And if you miss a week entirely because you forgot or went on vacation or something, that's fine. You can start back up the next week and your observations will still be useful for this study. There are three options for how to record and submit your observations each week. The first option is you can use a Google form and there's a link to this under detailed instructions on our website under step five. And you should be able to use the Google form from your computer or your smartphone or your tablet or whatever. The second option is you can download an app that we designed and it contains the same questions as in the Google form, just as a smartphone app. To download the app, you will navigate to the detailed instructions on our website, but you have to do it with a phone or tablet. And then you can tap the link under step five to download the app. Um, and this will have you download something called app sheet and then our app will come along with that. The third option, there's also a link next to these others to a PDF form, and you can just download it, print it out, and fill it out by hand. If you choose this method, you'll need to take a picture of the form or scan it after you've filled it out each week and then send it to us over email. And our email address is on the website. It's msuregrow at gmail.com. So use whichever of these three options sounds easiest to you. So I'll show you how to fill out the data using the app. Um, but it's the same information whether you're using the app or the Google form or a paper data sheet. Um, if you are using the app, if the form, the first thing you'll have to do, if the form doesn't pop up automatically, you may need to tap add new weekly data at the bottom of the screen and that will bring it up. So the first thing you'll enter in the app each week is the pin for your milkweed patch. And that's so we can link it back to the other data that you've submitted. Um, and we'll start by looking at the regrowing milkweed that you cut back. Um, first, you'll need to count the number of regrowing stems and enter that. You can count anything with an inch or more of regrowth on it. Um, next, you'll want to count up monarch eggs and caterpillars on the regrowing stems and enter that into the app. We're putting monarchs into three categories, eggs, caterpillars under one inch long, and caterpillars that are an inch or longer. Once you've entered all this information, you'll just repeat the same steps, but in the uh, plot with the stems that you left alone. And it's important to spend the same amount of effort looking at these stems so that we can make a fair comparison between the two treatments. So once you've entered all the information, there's a space for comments at the bottom, and then you just have to hit save and your data should be uploaded to us. If you missed a question, it won't let you save it until you fill in a number. Even if that number is zero, you need to fill it in. After you hit save, while the data is still uploading, you'll see a little orange circle with a one in the upper corner of the app. And once this goes away, it means we should have your information and you're all set for the week. So now that you know how to enter and submit the data, here's a little more on our technique for looking over a milkweed stem and trying to find the eggs and caterpillars. So first, you'll want to give the stem a general look over. Sometimes there's an obvious egg or caterpillar that you'll see right away. Also, sometimes you can see latex and feeding damage where there's a caterpillar feeding. Um, next, you'll want to gently check each leaf working from bottom to top. Often the eggs are on the leaf undersides, so be sure to check those too. Um, once you get to the upper leaves, you can sort of work the stem back and forth to see all the surfaces pretty easily. Um, and finally, then it's important to pull apart the new growth at the top and look in there. Early instar caterpillars like to hide in here and they can be easy to miss. The process of looking over a stem might take you a while the first few times, but after you get the hang of it, you'll be able to move pretty fast. And you'll repeat this process for every stem in this half of the milkweed patch. So here's some more information about how to identify monarch eggs. They're just over a millimeter or 1 20th of an inch tall, 
and they're sort of barrel shaped and they're a little thicker at the base than they are uh, towards the top. They're yellow and they have vertical ribs that look a bit like stripes. Um, when they're just about to hatch, they can turn brownish or purplish, and then they become totally transparent. So you can see a black dot inside, which is the caterpillar's head. Um, the easiest thing to confuse monarch eggs with is dried up latex from the milkweed plant, which can turn a yellowish color. You might find it helpful to use a magnifying glass if you have one, uh, just to make sure you're looking at an egg and not latex. And here are a couple more photos of monarch eggs just to help you form a search image in your brain. When you're looking for monarch caterpillars, monarchs are pretty distinctive looking. If it's on a milkweed stem and it has black, yellow, and white stripes, then it's probably a monarch caterpillar. Um, here they are in some of their earlier growth stages. And here are some once they've reached the fifth instar and are more than an inch long. Monarch caterpillars are trickiest to find and identify when they've just hatched. At this stage, they're really small, about the size of their egg, really and they can be a sort of beige color instead of being striped with a black head like you see here in the photo on the left. Um, towards the end of their first instar, they'll start to have some faint stripes like you can see in the photo on the right. Um, fortunately, the other non-monarch caterpillars that you might see eating milkweed are generally really hairy. So if you see a hairy caterpillar, it's probably not a monarch. Same for if you see a large group of caterpillars feeding together in a tight group. Those are tussock moth caterpillars, not monarchs. You're going to see all sorts of other insects on milkweed stems, and over the course of the summer, we'll try to give you some information on all of them as well. So thanks for watching, and we hope that you'll be participating in this study this summer. Um, once we've received and organized everybody's data, we'll send out an update every week or two so you can see how the experiment is going. So thanks for watching all the way to the end, and we hope you'll stay connected this summer.